A few of you will recognize this radio. It is an RCA 9X571 and collectors recognize it as the bullhorn. 11% of those questions said the U.S. economy was in good or excellent shape. What kind of shape are you in? How are you doing? I think in general, you know, the economy is slowing down in some areas. As far as purchase of power goes, I am grad This is the wiring diagram of the radio. And what I want to take a look at is the signal transfer from the 12SQ7 to the 50L6. I measured the DC voltage of the plate of the 12SQ7 and it reads 61.6 volts just a little low but uh, well within the limits of operation. Next I measured the voltage of the grid of the 50L6 which is pin 5 and I found it to be 0 0.376 volts. So now we have 61.6 volts on the left side of C15 and we've got 0 0.376 volts on the right side of C15. This is possible because of one of the very important characteristics of capacitors. Capacitors will block DC. In other words, DC current cannot pass through capacitors. Here's the setup. This is the uh, signal generator that I'm going to use for this demo. And here's my dual trace scope. And that yellow capacitor there is a dot 0.1 microfarad capacitor. The red wire is connected to channel 1 which is the source from the generator and the yellow wire goes down to channel 2 at the bottom. And the top trace is channel 1 and the bottom trace of course is channel 2 and I'm going to set this up and we're going to change the frequency of that generator. Okay, here's the trace and as you can see this dot zero one microfarad capacitor passes the audio almost with no loss. And I'm going to pop this up. We're in fairly high audio here. Now we're moving into RF range and everything passes through that dot zero one microfarad capacitor. Now I have changed the capacitor from a dot zero one to a one hundred and seventy picofarad capacitor, which is close enough. I don't have a hundred and fifty on hand, but as you can see, uh, there's very little audio going through that capacitor. But as I raise the frequency. Notice that the level going through the capacitor is increased. And when I go up to RF range, they're almost identical. So that 170 picofarad capacitor doesn't 
let audio pass through it very well but RF is absolutely no problem. So we saw that alternating current will travel through a capacitor and this is a representation that I use to remember that uh, the effect of alternating current will travel through a capacitor. Of course the electrons don't actually do that. It has to do with uh, the charging and discharging of the plates on either side. But the effect is AC travels through capacitors. And if you pick the right value you can actually choose the frequency that travels through the capacitor. So what's going on with this little circuit is that any RF that is coming out of the plate of the 12 SQ7 goes through that 150 picofarad capacitor and gets grounded. And the rest of the signal the audio that we want to amplify travels down and goes through C15, that dot 10 microfarad capacitor, to the grid of the 50L6 to be amplified. Here's a look at both of the paths of the RF frequency and the audio frequency. And some problems that can arise would be like C14, that 150 picofarad capacitor. If that were to be open, that means that the 50L6 would try and amplify radio frequency and it would distort the audio. All of this is possible because of two very important characteristics of capacitors. The first one is capacitors block DC so we can have two very different voltages on either side of a capacitor and also capacitors will let AC pass through them. And with choosing the right values of microfarads or picofarads of capacitors, it's possible to steer the different frequencies to different paths even though they're on the same wire.